The birch begins its life as a tiny seed that flies through the air to find its home. There it begins to grow and has a short lifespan akin to human life of about 70 or 80 years. Birch is a pioneer tree. It will fly across the land and where it grows, it helps to condition the soil. It helps to create home for other trees to come after it. So after the great ice ages, it's one of the first trees that would come flying across and landing upon that bare earth and grow and begin to help that very compacted acidic soil that had been under ice for a long time to help break it up. As the leaves fall down each autumn, those leaves help to alkalize and condition the soil. They help to deacidify the soil. So you'll often find birch growing on more acidic type soils. So here on the Ashdown, for example, it's growing amongst pine, um, bracken, gorse, heather, and the kind of habitats that it likes. It's a very versatile tree as well and will grow in other places. But one of the signatures you can see on the birch tree is the bark itself has this silver white which can remind you about its connection to the ice ages and the thaw that comes after the snow. So it's sometimes known in the old lore as mother of the trees. Even though it's not a tree that grows to a great age, it's a tree that can help create home for others to come. Another of the qualities of the birch or gifts that the birch gives to the environment are that the seeds are appreciated as a food for siskins, red poles and green finches and woodpeckers will often uh, create holes in the old um, the old wood of the birch as well. Birch is hearth and home to several species of highly valued fungi as the tree begins to die, a distinctive bracket fungus begins to grow and you will see the fruiting body of the birch polypore emerge. It is so intricately bound to the tree that even the tiny birch seeds are impregnated with its spores. Further to the north, birch hosts the tinderhoof fungus and also king of the medicinal mushrooms, chaga. Birch has symbiotic relationships through its root systems to several species of mushroom. Under the earth, roots of mycelium share nutrients and communicate, supporting each other's lives and linking up through these networks to the forest web as a whole. One of these mycorrhizal mushrooms is Flygaric, which is the traditional toadstool from fairy tales associated with otherworldly enchantments. Though poisonous, it is used by many northern indigenous groups for shamanic purposes and healing. We can also thank the birch for two of our favourite edible mushrooms, the chanterelle and the sep or penny bun, whose mycelium are woven together with the roots of the tree. In the Oum, the ancient Celtic tree alphabet, birch is the first tree, the first letter, pronounced beth or bay. Birch is the tree of new beginnings, but also pertains to the mystery between death and birth. It is the unknowable journey between those two doorways. As we prepare for new beginnings, we cleanse and purify, sweeping away the old with birch brooms. Our ancestors welcomed their newborns into their families and homes with birch boughs as a blessing and for protection, their cradles carved from its sacred wood. The birch tree dances gracefully, shining silver like the moon, and in many cultures she is called the Lady of the Woods. Her spirit is the divine feminine and expresses the three phases of womanhood. She has the purity and grace of the maiden. She is the homemaker and mother of the trees. Living in the mystery and embracing change, she carries the wisdom of the grandmother. An old tradition is for women to consecrate their sacred council fires with birch wood. 
birch is respected for her purity and healing, her light which drives away ill-wishing forces. Birch gives us a light in which to journey into the unknown in search of new beginnings. Birch is an excellent carving wood for bowls, spoons and other crafts. It has been traditionally used for cradles and children's toys. The wood is light and yet durable. Birch is a blessing for any fire. The wood can be used for fire by friction. An ember or any spark can be birthed to flame by the shredded silver bark. The bark can then be kindled by dry birch twigs. Birch is an excellent firewood when well seasoned also. Our ancestors often carried their precious fire with them on journeys and here the birch offers another gift, the tinderhoof fungus, which once dry can carry embers for several hours. The bark of birch in northern lands grows thicker and is used for many purposes including the building of canoes. Here again we see the theme of birch enabling a journey. The bark is also crafted into containers and is said to have oils which help preserve food. In autumn and winter, when the life force and sap has moved below the ground, it is time to harvest the twigs to make birken brooms, traditional in many parts of Eastern Europe and Russia, to sweep away the old, to renew and cleanse our homes, and in many folk tales, a witch's broom for otherworldly journeys. To broadly understand the medicine of the birch, it is good to understand how this tree grows and relates to the world that it belongs to. As a pioneer species, birch brings new life after the Ice Age and helps to alkalise the soil to bring vitality and health for other species to grow. As winter's cold releases its grip on the land, the sap begins to flow in the growing layer beneath the silver bark. In this special window of time, before the leaves emerge, it is possible to carefully harvest some of this precious medicine. The sap is slightly sweet, wonderfully refreshing and has profound cleansing and tonic properties on our bodies. It is rich in minerals and in particular a special birch-specific compound found in all its medicinal parts called betulinic acid. Just as the tree brings renewal after the ice age, to drink the sap gives new life after the heaviness of winter and also alkalizes the acidity in our bodies. There are too many medicinal properties to list here, but suffice to say that birch helps to rejuvenate, tonify and bring health. The alkalizing effects of birch are also found in the fresh leaves, which can be gathered in spring on a dry sunny day and either drunk as a fresh tea or dried out to have as tea through the year to come. This greatly aids many acidic conditions of the body, such as arthritis and gout, and can be extremely helpful for all sorts of urinary problems. The leaves can also be gathered on a dry sunny day and infused in oil. It's best to leave this on a windowsill to sun infuse with a thin cloth on top to let any moisture out. Stir daily and then strain after a couple of weeks. This oil is very good anti-inflammatory helping to detox the muscles and can also be used to help relieve psoriasis and eczema, especially when in combination with, dr with drinking the tea. When you see the rough and peeling bark of the birch tree, it will remind you of this property to help bring healing to skin conditions. The birch polypore brings a great concentration of birch medicine at the end of the tree's life. Infused with the sap, it is highly concentrated in healing properties this mushroom can be used as a plaster to treat wounds, swellings, burns and blisters. The whole mushroom can be made into teas and tinctures to treat a huge range of conditions including viruses, cancers, parasites and fungal infections. Chaga mushroom, sometimes called king of the medicinal mushrooms, has a long history of use as a highly prized medicine to protect us from illness and boost our immune system. It is also used as a tinder mushroom to carry an ember. Many of its properties are those infused by the sap of the birch. The birch tree was used and revered by our ancestors for its bright spirit and valuable medicine. 
This special tree also brings its vitality and medicine to our soils and to many species in the forest where it grows. So our ancestors understood their relationship to the land by learning from the lives of the plants and trees and animals around them. So we also can learn again to see life in that way and ask ourselves what could we learn from how the birch grows, how this tree interacts with the environment. And birch can teach us to be flexible, to, to live gracefully, to embrace new beginnings and to let go when it's time to let go.